and welcome to the first installment of the U.S. Department of Energy's Biomass Program Staff Spotlight video series. Today, we will be interviewing Valerie Reed, Acting Program Manager for the Biomass Program. Dr. Reed has been with the program for more than 18 years, and Biofuels Digest has twice named Dr. Reed to its top 100 people in bioenergy list. Dr. Allison Gossang, the Biomass Program's Operations Lead, will be interviewing Dr. Reed. So, Valerie, what's your role in the Biomass Program? Currently, I am the Acting Program Manager for the Biomass Program, uh, but prior to this uh, position, I was the lead for research and development, particularly around conversion technologies. Cool. Sounds great. So, Valerie, what's your vision for the Biomass Program as a whole? Well, simply put, I envision an industry, very much like the petroleum industry, in which an array, an array of products are produced from a single feedstock. The difference, however, would be that this feedstock is a domestically produced biomass feedstock that is produced sustainably. So we need to take into account uh, future generations and ensure that we are producing our energy crops alongside our food crops uh, with an eye towards water as well as air quality associated with the industry. So this industry would be fully domestic and produce jobs at the same time as securing our economy around. The program has switched its focus to drop-in hydrocarbon fuels. Does that mean that you're abandoning cellulosic ethanol? Oh, absolutely not. We are not abandoning cellulosic ethanol. In fact, fiscal year 12 was an extremely important year for the biomass program and its partners. Uh, this particular year, the program will meet its goal of uh, validating at bench and pilot scale technologies that will enable uh, the production of cellulosic ethanol cost competitively. In addition, uh, with our partners, we are building um, four commercial scale biorefineries, all of which have broken ground, and at least one will be operational before the end of uh, 2012. This is a significant accomplishment uh, towards moving a biomass-derived industry forward, and the uh, attention now is turned toward displacing the entire bear. Uh, as you know, cellulosic ethanol displaces gasoline, and that makes up 40% of the barrel. Um, we need to look at the other 60% if we're going to have the stable economies associated with the bioenergy industry. A lot of the technologies that we're developing for hydrocarbon fuels are being built from those already developed for the cellulosic ethanol field. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, low-cost sugar production. Um, we will continue to improve these technologies, which ultimately will improve uh, the bottom line for cellulosic ethanol, as well as move us forward into a full array of uh, fuels, both diesel, jet, aviation, as well as uh, petroleum-based product displacement. Sounds like cellulosic ethanol, and it is just the beginning, and there's a lot more to be done. Absolutely. We need to have all of these fuels available uh, to, in order to ensure we have secure energy future. Okay, great. So recently, there's been an, an interest in natural gas as a cheap domestic feedstock for vehicles and stationary generators. I'm wondering, where does that leave biofuels? Well, when it comes to natural gas, there's a number of issues we have to take into consideration. Um, as we are all aware, the fracking uh, technologies have uh, opened up a new uh, vein, if you will, of cheap natural gas, uh, supposedly 100 years or more supply of, of this resource. This has had an impact on electricity production, slowing the growth of new coal uh, facilities. Um, but we have to ask ourselves, is uh, there enough of this resource to supply both the electricity generation as well as a gas to liquid scenario, which would be necessary to produce liquid transportation fuels. There are a, uh, a number of key issues associated with that that we need to take into consideration, uh, the largest of which is economics. Uh, it is understood how to convert natural gas into liquid transportation fuels. Um, it does not do a good job at producing gasoline. However, it, it can produce diesel substitutes. Um, however, these are very expensive facilities on the order of billions of dollars to build, and they're quite large. A number of key players in the industry are looking at this as a potential technology uh, to uh, move their supplies forward. However, uh, the cost of natural gas fluctuates. 
Um, we've seen over the last couple of years anywhere from two dollars a gal. Uh, I'm sorry, a million BTU, all the way up to fifteen dollars a million BTU. That, with the potential fluctuation in the petroleum market, will make financing these facilities very difficult. Um, we also have to take into account environmental issues. While natural gas is cleaner than, say, coal, it is still a hydrocarbon fuel, and uh, we would have to compare uh, the environmental benefits of producing liquid fuels from natural gas versus that of potentially going to a sustainable biomass industry. Um, we also have to say to ourselves, if we stop production of renewables now, will we not inevitably be postponing a future where we're going to have to pick up this technology development again? It seems to me it would make sense to continue developing both of these technologies so that we could have an all of the above type of uh, approach towards uh, energy and our future, uh, ensuring a portfolio of domestically produced fuels that will last us many, many more years than 100 um, and well into uh, generations of Americans. Right. So in addition to natural gas, we have to keep our biofuel development um, moving forward as well. Absolutely, and I would say the same is true with uh, solar, wind, water, uh, any type of electricity generation from renewables. We will need all of these in the future, and we need to continue to develop these at a steady pace, or they won't be there when the time comes. Thanks. So Valerie, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in pursuing a career in bioenergy? Well, I will say that when I started my career 20 years ago, bioenergy was a concept, um, but it wasn't necessarily a career path. Uh, we were biotechnology uh, experts, we were chemical engineers, and we were looking at, at the future of, of energy production in this country. Now, when you go to universities, you see whole programs around bioenergy. Um, you can major in bioenergy economics, you can major in uh, production of biofuels. It's an exciting time for people who are looking at new career opportunities. I think um, much like when I went to college and being a petroleum engineer was a, was a important uh, direction to be headed in, I think people are going to be looking at bioengineering, uh, sorry, biofuels engineering, bioenergy uh, development as, as the wave of the future. And there'll be a lot of jobs out there uh, to help support the industry. So I do recommend people look at this um, in conjunction with petroleum and other energy issues. Uh, in a global world where we're going to have a portfolio of options, we're going to need to have people who are well trained and understand the differences between these options um, and how they impact our overall society. So it's an exciting time to be going into the field. I think that you should be looking at broad um, education associated with this. I think the jobs will be there. Uh, we will need well-trained individuals in the sciences as well as individuals who are able to um, operate these facilities. Um, so I, I, I think it's an exciting time and I hope people will pursue a future in bioenergy. So you see there's a lot of potential um, for someone who is looking to get into the industry to, to, to do, get the education and training and, and have a job waiting for them once they finish. Right, the jobs will span the whole life cycle, so uh, the agricultural community will need to have support from not only uh, scientists, but also farmers who are able to produce these crops uh, sustainably um, and increase the production, as we've seen happen with corn over time. Um, we will need to have people who can operate unique uh, harvesting equipment that's already under development. Uh, there will be people who will be looking at the next generation of harvesting equipment, so there will be very high-tech jobs in that area. In addition, we will continue to see uh, research and development, particularly in um, biotechnology, in uh, catalyst development, those types of things for many years to come. So there's a full array of job potential out there that you can turn um, turn your attentions towards. Well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. <laughs>